What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back. Y'all, welcome back. It is Wednesday. Real talk. What's up, everybody? What's up? First of all, I hope you guys had a great weekend, a great week, Monday, Tuesday. Whenever you're watching this video, I hope you are having like an amazing day. Girl, I'm sitting here really trying to get used to this mouthpiece. I'm going to just start calling it that a mouthpiece. Now, mind you, it is Monday and it is the week after Thanksgiving. And I really did have plans on going to the dentist again today because I really need them to take off some of the top. I feel like something is like suctioning my mouth. I just need to feel comfortable while wearing this. I really feel like, you know what? A part of me is starting to feel like, girl, you should have just paid the $3,500 and just got the bridge. Because seriously, right now, like, okay, so honestly, I've been wearing my teeth. But because it was Thanksgiving, I didn't really have to go nowhere. There was no school for Tinky all week. And Tato was sick. She ended up having the flu. Like I told you guys, she ended up having the flu. So she didn't go to daycare school neither. So I didn't have to leave the house. So if I wasn't leaving the house, who I need to impress? inside of my house. My kids already know me. They didn't see me without my teeth. So I didn't wear the teeth for like the whole time during Thanksgiving. Today is Monday and I got them in and I just feel like there's something suctioning in my mouth. That's the only way I could describe it. But I'm going to go to the dentist tomorrow, Tuesday morning, and I'm going to have them adjust a little bit more. Look, I really feel like, damn, I should have just spent the three Gs. Like it was like, I think it was like 3,500 for like the three teeth, like the bridge. I know I'll get used to it. I'll get used to it. I'm going to make sure that I get used to it because I need my teeth. Okay. Sometimes I'd be real realizing I leave the house without the damn tooth. Then I'm like, oh, shoot, I just best not say nothing to nobody while I'm out and about. Like, girl, this is the day to just be quiet. Like, keep keep your opinions and your statements to yourself. But anyway, let me tell y'all. OK, so first of all, I hope you all had like a really great Thanksgiving. Now, if y'all wondering where hair this is, this is not the same wig that I had on last week by RPG show. And I also did a video recently on it. But this is um, I think I did this video probably like six months ago. This is a my first wig wig. Girl, this wig is so cute. So nice. It's a yakky texture. So that's why I really, really like it a lot because it just looks more natural. But anyway, okay, so let me tell y'all. Y'all know how I kept saying in the video last last week, last Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving, but I said it on a Monday because that's when I recorded it, but, you know, it went public on Wednesday, right? But y'all know how I kept saying in that video how I'm over Thanksgiving. I wish Thanksgiving will come every three years. I'm tired of being the master cooker, uh, et cetera, et cetera, da, 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 all that shit, right? Okay, so Tuesday, was it Tuesday? Wednesday, I started cooking, okay? I realized, like, there wasn't a lot of people that was going to be here. It was just going to be the people in the household, plus my daughter Nay's boyfriend or maybe Mumsy's friend. But that might come over. So it wasn't like a gang of people was going to be here. So last last Thanksgiving of 2023, that was the first Thanksgiving that I never made a turkey. I didn't make a turkey. I just went to Sam's Club and bought, like, six rotisserie chickens, okay? Like, about six of them. Three for here and three for over at my son's house, okay? So, mind you, the rotisserie chickens at Sam's Clubs is bomb. Like, it tastes so good. And I'm, like, really picky. Like, the ones at Kroger, them shits don't taste like nothing. They don't even look like they cooked all the way. But anyway, the ones, even the ones at Walmart, which is, you know, sister company to Sam's Club, they taste okay. But the ones at Sam's Club taste just amazing. They taste so good. They juicy. They got so much flavor. They taste good. Okay, girl? And they only $4.98. Okay? And when I say they taste good, that means they already been cooked, bitch. Okay? So that's like $5. That's, that is $5 of rotisserie that's already cooked. And a lot of times people go and get those because it's just like, you don't have to go out and buy fast food. We can go and get a rotisserie from Sam's Club and just add some size, right? You know what I'm saying? Like that. So that's what I did last Thanksgiving. I didn't make a turkey. I went and I bought six of those rotisseries. And you know, turkeys ain't cheap. So that was $30 right there. And plus it was already cooked for a bitch. Okay. So all I did last Thanksgiving was I took them out. I bought them the day before. And then the day of Thanksgiving, you know what I'm saying? I put them in the pan with the stuffing that I had cooked. And then I put it back in the oven to let it crisp back up. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. So I wasn't going to go buy a turkey this year, neither. All right. I wasn't buying a turkey this year as well. I had went Wednesday. I went to Sam's Club. Well, Tati went to Sam's Club and she got three rotisseries. And then, you know, on Wednesday, me and the girls, we cut up the um, the yams, the sweet potatoes. We cut those up so I can make the yams on Thanksgiving. On um, Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving, I made cabbage. I made potato salad. We made two pies. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I'm um, probably not. 
So, you know, I made those things on Wednesday and I made the pies, you know, the two pies, we put them in the oven. Bay. So Thursday morning, you know what I'm saying? I get up. It was like 8.30. I wake up and I go downstairs and I get the ingredients together for my homemade dressing, you know, my homemade gravy, which take about six hours because Tati like a big old pot of it. So I go do that, right? I'm cooking that up. I'm cooking other things up. And then I was like, let me put the ham in the oven. Now, you know, when you buy a ham, like a smoked ham is already cooked, pre-cooked for you, right? But I don't know if other people put it back in the oven, but a bitch like me be cooking that shit for like two to three more hours. I like it to be crisp and glazed. Girl, I be doing my own little fancy, fancy smanchy shit to it, right? Make my own little dressing for the ham, my own like maple, honey, you know, brown sugar dressing. I make my own dressing for the ham. Okay, so while the ham is in the oven, you know, I'm on the, on, on top of the stove making the dressing for it. And not just the dressing for the ham, but also the dressing for, you know, my regular gravy. So, you know, I've turned the oven on and I think I had it on free fit. Okay, and it goes beep when it's ready. You know what I'm saying? So, I put the ham in, and maybe like two hours go by. You know, I had made the yams. I had melted all. You know what I'm saying? All this fucking marshmallows all over the um the yams. And see, I don't put my marshmallows in whole. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I don't take my marshmallows out the bag and just start sticking them on the yams I, and then put it in the oven. I don't do that shit. You know why I don't do that shit? Let me tell you why I don't do that shit. Because one year, like, this was like a minute ago. This was like a long time ago. Um, it has to be like about a good, I've been here 11 years. So this shit has to be at least like 15 years ago. i never forget, I did that with the EMs. Was it, was it that long ago? I don't know, but it was long enough. I put marshmallows, whole marshmallows on top of the yams to put it in the oven. Please tell me why the motherfuckers caught on fire, okay? They caught on fire, I caught it and put them out. So after that, I never ever put the marshmallows whole. I always take it in a pot, I put some margarine in a pot and I melt them like that and then I pour it all over and then I put it in because the yams, because the marshmallows can catch on fire. So you just gotta be really, really careful. And I know it was with a gas stove because you know it has the flame going on. So it was with a gas stove. I have a electric stove now, so I don't have that, but I'm just so used to doing that. So anyway, I'm ready to put the yams in the oven. You know, I was like, oh, let me get this. Let me, let me put these in the bottom rack. So I open up the oven and I'm like, and I have my ear pods in too, right? I'm listening to music. I'm grooving and shit. I have my ear pods in, right? So I'm listening to music and I'm like really getting down. I open up the oven and I'm like, I'm preparing myself for the heat once I open the oven up, right? I open up the motherfucking oven and so I take my phone and I pause the music because I'm like confused as why I don't feel no motherfucking heat coming out this goddamn oven. So I'm like, this did you forget to fucking turn the oven on? So now I have to take the earpods out because I'm really wanting to concentrate. Like like taking the earpods out or pausing music is really going to make the oven turn hot, right? So then I push the button for the oven to come on because everything on the top where the stove is at is cooking. You know what I'm saying? And this is an electric stove, so everything is cooking. Nay's in the kitchen with me. I'm telling her what the fuck is going on. We keep opening the oven. That shit ain't even getting beeping. We putting our head up in there. That shit ain't even... It's like room temperature. That shit is... Like, what the fuck? Did, 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 was it ever fucking on? And now I'm, I'm thinking, like, was the oven ever the fuck on? Bitch, I don't even know. I can't even remember if the oven was really on. Okay, this is me for the for the moment. I'm like, God damn, what the fuck? So Nay is like, well, the top is working. I'm like, it's two separate components. It doesn't matter if the top is working and the bottom isn't. But you know what I'm saying? It's two separate. Even though it's one unit, it's still two separate. Bitch, why the fuck do we pull the oven out? You know, we pull it out, roll it out. And Nay's like, let's just unplug it and see what happens. And then plug it back in. I was like, I don't even think that's going to do nothing, but okay, let's just do it, okay? Because I got this fucking big-ass pan of yams, and Tati got to make baked macaroni and cheese still, and the bitch still want her, uh, her, you know, ham to be a little bit crisp, and I got to make cornbread up in this bitch. So as we roll it the fuck out, okay, why am I looking under there? There's like about 10 or 12 motherfucking um, Eggo waffles up under that bitch and a couple link sausages. So my grandson thought that it was a great idea to just shove them up under the oven, the stove, because he didn't want to eat them because I put butter on them. Well, you could have just gave them back or you could have just put them in the garbage instead of just shoving them up under the stove. Thank God we don't have rodents out here. And thank God I don't have roaches because what I do have is an ant problem. I haven't had that problem in like two years and I haven't even had an exterminator for that shit. But ants, I had an ant problem twice really bad 
since I've been living in this house over the 11 years, and I haven't had it in a couple of years. If I would have had another ant issue, I would have never thought that they was coming from because of under the stove if the stove had stopped working on a bitch. Yes, we found all those waffles, and he admitted to it. If you didn't like the link sausages, you could have just gave a girl her sausage the fuck back. You didn't have to shove them under the stove. But I think he had his sister put them under there, or he did it for his sister. I don't know, but they was up under there, okay? We unplugged the shit and then plug it back in. That shit stayed room temperature. The oven broke down on me on Thanksgiving, okay? Thanks to my big ass mouth talking about, oh, Thanksgiving need to come every three years. Thanksgiving this, Thanksgiving that. I'm so over it. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah, but goddamn on Thanksgiving day, it worked It worked fine the day before Thanksgiving, okay? Because I made them two cherry pies up in that bitch. But on Thanksgiving, I was like, are you kidding me? So I had to take my yams and I had to separate them in smaller pans that would fit in my um, toaster oven slash air fryer. Thank God I have a toaster oven that does a lot of things, okay? But the only thing is, it's not as big. When I tell you this bitch had two fucking rotisserie chickens, they were side by side, okay? Up in the goddamn toaster oven to crisp up for Thanksgiving. They, when I tell you they were stuck, they were side by side, them shits look like conjoined twins, okay? They was that close on top of each other up in the toaster oven. It wasn't like I could put one on top and one on the bottom. No, it was not that big like that. So they had to be side by side, okay? And that was that. But they crisped up real good, girl. Yes, they crisped up real good up in the toaster oven. You know, I put it to broil on the toaster oven. Um, I had to cook my yams um, in the toaster oven. I had them on broil up in the two pans. My, my cornbread came out perfectly fine on bake in the toaster oven. But as for that ham, I had to slice the ham up Oh, the entire ham, I had to slice it up. But you, because you know, it's smoked, it's already cooked. So, you know, I sliced it all up, poured my juices, my dressing on it. And I had to cook that in there. Tati had to make four small individual pans of macaroni, baked macaroni and cheese, and put it in there. Girl, that's how we had to do it. Me and my big ass mouth talking about, oh, I hate Thanksgiving. When I tell you I'll never talk again, it's like manifest manifestation. And I don't really believe in that shit, but can I get manifest myself a million dollars? Like I'm talking about that to you guys right now, how much I love to have a million dollars, how much a million dollars will work for me and my family. It, it'll set me off. It doesn't even have to be a million dollars. It could be half of that. And I'm very grateful for half of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's manifest that shit together because I sure did manifest that. And look, I was like, when I was standing in the kitchen talking to Nay, I I was like, Nay was laughing. Like I was, I was, I was so fucking pissed. I had to have a drink and I hadn't had a drink in like two weeks. I had to have a drink. Okay. I had to have a drink and I had to have, I had to smoke my weed. Okay. So I'm in the kitchen and I'm smoking my weed and Nay is laughing at me because I'm like saying crazy shit. Like I'm, I'm like, at this point I'm laughing off because there's nothing I can do about it, but I'm just thankful that I had that toaster oven. Right. But I'm telling you this, like I told Nay, if we didn't have that motherfucking toaster oven, bet you we was going to Walmart because they was open and I was buying me one for that Thanksgiving. My Christmas wish list, my daughters was like, my tati was like, where's your list? Where's your list? And on my list, okay, if y'all want me to text y'all my list, let me know because it's in notes and it's shareable, okay? But let me tell y'all, listen, my list consisted of nothing but like markers and crayons, excuse me, not crayons, markers and coloring books and like my favorite beauty skin hair products um, and shit like that. Like there was really nothing that I needed for Christmas to be honest with you. I'm just happy to be here and I really don't want for much. When I And that's what my list consisted of it. When I tell you my list now consists of a nice ass, big ass fucking toaster oven slash con conventional oven. Yes, got that shit on there because God forbid something else happened. Like I'm like, nay, they're never going to believe this. They're never going to believe this. So I had to record me and nay talking about the oven to y'all because What's up, y'all? Listen, happy Thanksgiving, all of that, okay? All of that. Y'all know how I said I hate Thanksgiving and I wish it would only come once every three years. Da 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 right? So yeah, I did say that and I definitely did mean it. My stove, my oven had to stop working today. I swear to you, I put the ham in there and I know I felt some heat. And part of me just is like, and don't mind how I look right now, but a part of me is like, did I feel the heat? So I went to put in my yams, you know what I'm saying? It was, they was marshmallowed up. So they was marshmallowed up, okay? Big ass pan. I went to open the oven again. I was like, I looked up because I wanted to make sure I had turned that shit on. And everything else, the burners on the top was working, you know? And then I turned it back on and I was like, the oven is cold. So I tried again. You know, I turned it on. I said, maybe I didn't turn it on. You know, I just don't know. Girl, the shit never got hot. 
it stopped working. The oven stopped working. So now we ain't gonna have no baked macaroni and cheese. Okay. We ain't gonna have no fucking ham. Okay. I had to take my, my yams and separate them and put them in my toaster oven. Me and Nay, right there, Nay, we had to pull the oven out and unplug it and see if that would help and restart it. No. It did not work. It happens. At least we have food. <laughs> Just trying to make the light out of it. Yeah, we do have food. We have oxtail. We have rotisserie chickens. Cause, cause I went to Sam's Club. Well, Nate Tati went to Sam's Club yesterday and got me three of the rotisserie chickens. Cause I wasn't making no turkey. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't have been able. To. But right, we wouldn't have been. I would have been so mad. I would have been so mad. Okay, putting a big ass raw bird in the garbage. Okay. Um, the rotisseries are good, but I did want to put them in the oven to crisp them back up. But I'm gonna just see if I can fit one in a, in a toaster oven. Yeah, I just want to tell y'all that I jinxed myself. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. When I tell you, I was I was shocked. I was shocked, like, and I forgot to call it in today. So I do have to call the maintenance department and have them come and either look at it or replace it. They're gonna be like, this poor lady. No, they're not even gonna be like this poor lady. My management company is gonna be like, well, it's always one thing after another. We just fixed the goddamn air conditioning unit. She just got a whole new air conditioning unit. This is like two weeks ago. Before that, we fixed the leaks, the goddamn molding. Uh, what else did they replace? Um, the kitchen sink. And like now she wants a new stove. What's next? She's breaking shit on purpose. Like, like a part of me doesn't even want to call them. Like straight up, part of me doesn't even want to call them and tell them, like, yo, my fucking oven part broke. What broke down on your Thanksgiving? I don't even want to call them because I feel like they're gonna really probably feel like I'm I'm doing something over here. But like really, I, there's nothing for me to break. Like I can't break the air conditioning unit. It's in the wall, so you know there's nothing I can I can do to that. Um. And it started leaking, like, there's nothing I could do about that. That wasn't me. This, the kitchen sink wasn't even the kitchen sink. It was, I love, just, I just don't want to be blamed, okay? I just don't want to be blamed. So that's how my Thanksgiving went. I'm like, oh my God, they're, they're not going to believe me. They're definitely not going to believe me with this. Oh my God. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck it is, but I always seem like, you know what? For... For me to have had the worst luck up on Thanksgiving, and I don't even know if I really want to say it was the worst of luck, because it was bad. I, if there was a point when I really did want to break down in tears, because I was like, oh my God, what the fuck? And the funny part about it was, it wasn't even funny, but, you know, Tati was sleeping. Like, it was like, probably like, it was probably like 12 o'clock. And, you know, she works at night. So she got home for Thanksgiving at like 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning. So she was like sleep. And then, you know, Tato was up. My granddaughter was up at like 6, 30. So she really didn't get no sleep. She probably had like an hour of sleep or whatever. So, you know, I took over and told her to go lay down. And, I, you know, I got the kids. So, and I'm going to just finish cooking. Because all she was going to make was the, some baked macaroni and cheese. And so, like, the day before Thanksgiving, like I said, I was preparing, like, you know, my girls and Tati, I mean, Mumsy and Nay, they helped me, like, you know, cut up vegetables, like, you know, onions and stuff like that, and peeled potatoes, and they did the pies. So, when I went to wake up Tati on Thanksgiving to tell her about the oven, I was like, you know, I went in there, I opened the door, and I was like, Tati, guess what? And she was like, what, what? Cause you know, she was in the seat. I was like, I got some bad news, girl. She was like, what? I was like, bad news. She was like, oh my God, who died? Who died? And I was like, the oven died. Cause like, what the fuck? You thought it was bad news, somebody died. And she was like, what? And when I told her, I don't know if she thought I was lying or whatever, but she was like, she knew, I think she realized I was telling the truth. Well, but everything, you know, for it to be like, it wasn't that bad of a tragedy, but I did have a moment. Like I said, when I was ready to cry about the shit, but Everything turned out good. Like the macaroni and cheese turned out good. You know what I'm saying? The ham turned out good. I sliced the ham. I sliced up that entire effing ham, okay? So everything turned out good, all right? I, I will kid you not. And I put that in. Everything turned out good. So I'm, I'm I'm very glad that we had the toaster oven. But I'm like, damn, why the oven want to work? Why did the oven want to work the day before Thanksgiving? And then on Thanksgiving Day, it was like, oh, you remember what you said, right? Well, now you can just keep... Oh um, man, and then, but so crazy when I had told Tati about it, and after she had realized the oven had died, she was like, "Well, it's okay. We have other things to eat." And I was like, "What?" 
because I don't want to put my rotisserie in the microwave to heat it up. I want to crisp it back up, like, you know what I'm saying? The skin on the top. And then, you know, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm going to shove these motherfucking tur- um, rotisserie ch- chickens in this goddamn toaster oven. And that's what I did. And they was nice and nice and crisp, too. I'm telling you, I had to make it work. I had to make it happen. But I don't know about next Thanksgiving. Like, I just, I don't even want to talk about that shit. Not today, not tomorrow. Um, Christmas, I don't want to talk about really no holidays no more, okay? I'm going to just say this. It turns out great. I'm going to shut my fucking mouth, and that is that. Now, we're going to get into this real talk. Like I told y'all last week, I got one real talk for today. If you have a real talk that you want me to talk about, you can go ahead and send me an email to muffetismylovers2012 at gmail.com, and please put in the subject, real talk, or you can send it to aprilsrealtalk at gmail.com, and please also put in the subject line, real talk. If you want to change the names of the people you're talking about, including yourself in the real talk episode that you're going to be telling me about, out in the email to let me know that you changed your names if not then maybe i will change it myself or maybe not doesn't matter but let's get into this real talk like when people be um naming their real talks like i don't know it just it's just cool for me uh, so i feel like it's i don't know i just really like when people um name their real talks so here we go this one is called dysfunctional family hey miss april first let me begin with thank you so much for taking the time to read this email i'm trying to figure out what to do about a friendship and neighbor all at the same time you can call me Glitter for this email as I am not sure if my friend slash neighbor watches you. But I live in a decent neighborhood, at least that is how I feel, especially since I grew up in the hood projects in Brooklyn. I feel like where I live at now, which is not Brooklyn, New York and any longer, but it's Texas and the neighborhood where I live at, I feel is decent. So this is why I don't understand most of this happening. Everyone speaks to one another. The neighbors, from what I see, seem to be good people, well-kept homes. I live in a townhouse community. So me and this lady became good friends. I have been living there for well over 10 years. I moved in when I just turned 30. My dirt, my daughter at the time was six years old. So me and one of the neighbors, they have been living there just as long, maybe a year or two more than me. Anyway, she's in like her mid thirties, no husband and a kid. I believe her daughter is about 10 or 11, something like that. Now I never imagined she and I getting along or becoming friends like the way we are because we both come from two total different backgrounds. She is white, which means probably absolutely nothing at all to some, but she was born in Houston, Texas, and she comes from a good family, I would say. Her mom's a teacher, her dad is retired fireman, and she has a brother who is in the armed forces and herself. She works from home as a counselor to alcoholic. So I go over to visit with her one evening, and I notice all these unopened packages in her dining room on the table and chairs like, wow, she went on a shopping spree. So I did say to her, girl, you busy shopping. I see doing some online retail therapy for yourself. And she laughed it off and said, girl, you know, and waved me on to come into the kitchen for drinks she was making for the two of us. We in there chilling, laughing, talking, etc. She goes in the back of the house and I'm getting myself together to get ready to leave. So I go to retrieve my purse and jacket, which I left in her living room. And I went through the dining room to get to that living room. As I'm walking through the dining room, I notice all different company brands on the boxes. Curious, I look and the packages weren't even addressed to her, nor was they her address. Miss April, she had other people's packages in her home. So at this point, I gather my things and I holler to her, I'm leaving, and I let her daughter lock the door behind me. When I tell you I was so confused and shocked and not knowing what to say or do at this point, can you imagine someone stealing your mail purposely? 
When I tell you she and I are cool, it's like now I feel like she has been lying to me all this time. Not just lying, but stealing behind my back. Now, this ain't all there is to it. I decided to not speak to her like for a week. She comes over asking me how I'm feeling because she hadn't heard from me. I told her I just been busy. She must have felt I was lying and asked me what it was really going on. I then told her what I saw in her home the last time I was over. She really wasn't trying to explain anything. She just basically said people can always get a replacement item shipped out to them from most of these companies. And if it was something medical, then she would have never taken it. I'm still shocked because I honestly thought I knew her, but I feel like I am conspiring because I know what she has done or does. Like she's still cool to me because she hasn't done anything ill to me, but like I'm not good with stealing from people. To me, that is just low and despicable. She feels as if she's owed whatever she takes because she's a single mother, hardworking, and it's replaceable by a new package sent out to the customer. Have you ever met anyone that steals like this? What in the world should I do? Thank you, Glitter. So Glitter, Glitter is friends with a kleptomaniac. A package mail thieving kleptomaniac. Oh, girl, you better not put your stuff down. You better hide your kids, hide your pearls, hide your wigs and your jewelry because you got yourself a kleptomaniac friend, okay? The only thing I'm remembering is, I mean, like the far end where she said that did she even say what this lady's name was? She ain't giving her name, so we're gonna call her we're gonna call her Matilda. Um Matilda, I'm with Maddie. We don't call her Maddie. Maddie feels like it's replaceable, so it's okay to steal other people's packages. But she also said if it was something medical, she would never take it. How you gonna know it's medical unless you open that shit? Okay, like, oh, what are you gonna look at the return label and say, oh, it came from a doctor pharmacy, so I'm gonna leave it here? If it came from CVS, you're gonna leave it there because CVS sell more than just medical Walgreens. I'm just saying, like, how you gonna really even know that it's medical? What you gonna take it, open it, and then if it's like some syringes or shit, you're gonna bring it back to the doorstep? I mean, like, just be for real. How are you going to tell somebody it's okay, basically, because it's replaceable? I'm pretty sure it is replaceable from some companies or brands, but it's not. That's not the point. That's not the point in the matter. Like, you don't go around taking people's packages off their fucking lawn. I, did, you know what? Let me tell y'all. I be pissed off when they, when the Amazon people be delivering my shit to the wrong house, and then have the nerve to fucking message me notifications talking about your package has been delivered, and then send me a picture of that shit, and it's not even where I live at. Like, are you kidding me? That's what I hate. But what I hate even more is they'll deliver it like the house right next to me, and then the neighbors will know that shit and wait two to three days to bring it to me. Like, you don't see that you're holding onto my package for three fucking days already. So now I've already done. Called for a backup, a replacement. Bitch, I call that same fucking day for a replacement, okay? I'll call for a replacement, and then here you are, come ringing my doorbell. Oh, I have your package. You knew you fucking had my package for three fucking days. What are you talking about? That's what the fuck I don't like. But that's not the case with um, Maddie. No, this bitch is going around stealing whatever she can, and then got the nerve to have it sitting inside of her house, in the dining room, on chairs and tables, with the, the boxes unopened, like she ain't get to that shit yet. I don't know about y'all, but if I steal somebody's shit, I'm gonna open it that day, because like like she said, what if it's something medical? You got to bring it the fuck back, don't you? Listen, I don't know about y'all, but I like opening packages. I like getting packages, okay? I would love when I used to leave and go to New York for like two weeks and I would come back home. I have like 20 packages. Most of them was wigs and shit, but I'd still be happy to go and open the packages. So I don't know about fucking Maddie, but if I have a dining room full of packages that don't belong to me, a bitch is opening them up that day because I'm very curious to know what I done stole, okay? But not Maddie. She got them shits laying around and then had the nerve to wave fucking glitter off and like ha 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 laughed it off and was like come back here so we can get drunk and we can talk about these fucking stolen packages but what's so crazy is glitter you're curious bitch no you're nosy okay how the fuck you gonna go to somebody else's house okay and then walk through I mean yeah I mean I guess if I went to your house too and I see all these packages it has to be a lot it couldn't have been like three because three packages ain't really a lot to say to somebody like you've been on a shopping spree okay and then the other person laughed it off she said they was on the dining room table and in chairs so that means that fucking dining room was fucking covered in packages fucking Maddie's ass was on a goddamn stealing spree that's what the fuck she was on okay but Glitter's nosy okay because she went to somebody's house was walking through she had to walk through the dining room to get to another room okay I get that but she said 
that when she left to go retrieve her things, which was in the living room, she had to walk through the dining room to get to that living room. She was curious, so she started looking to see what the brands were. No, bitch, you were being fucking nosy. You were being nosy. You don't go to somebody else's house and be nosy. I'm not even talking shade about you because that shit is funny, but could you imagine going to somebody's house and then you feel like, oh shit, not like she said, I feel like I'm conspiring. Why? Because you see the packages there? What the fuck are you going to do? Call the mail police? I mean, I don't even know. Sometimes, like, this is what me happen. Do I know people that are... What did she say? Did she ask me, do I know anyone that steals like that? Okay, what? Have you ever met anyone that steals like this? What in the world should I do? Well, I don't know anybody that goes around stealing packages off of people's property. I don't know those type of people. I don't really try to fuck with those type of people. Those are called porch, porch, uh, porch pirates or whatever. No, I don't know those type of people. I do. I have known some thieves in my time. Like, back in the day, I don't know any right now. But, okay, um, what would I do? Like, sometimes I just be really trying to mind my business. And I don't mean with you guys, but I'm talking about in, in life in general, like in my life, like in my reality, when I'm out and about or when I'm socializing with other people. You know how you just try to sometimes, like, mind your business? Like, you don't want to get involved. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I knew somebody that did this, then that's a hard one. Because I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to be nobody's motherfucking informant, no snitch, no rat. I don't, I'm not trying to be none of that shit. How you get, how you get yours is how you get yours. That's not my business. You know what I'm saying? What you do to survive is not my business. Okay. As long as that shit don't fuck with me. Okay. And mine, then I'm good. So sometimes I do like to mind my business, but like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, like I'm really being honest with you guys. I don't know. Cause like I just said, I'm, I'm not a snitch, but I will tell on your ass, <laughs> but, um, I don't know I, I, if I walked through somebody's house and they had like mad packages that didn't belong to them and they stole I think I would probably more than likely be saying some shit to them about the shit because it's not right like that would be my that would be like my reflex as 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 a reply I would definitely say something to that person I probably would get mad because I've had a package stolen from me like a few times in New York not here but I've had a package stolen from me in New York a few times okay um, so I had to change it up for if I'm not home, do not leave any packages. I'll come, I'll gladly come to the post office and pick them up. And that's what I would do. I would, I, I had it to where any package left in my house, I had to sign for it because I had packages stolen from me, you know what I'm saying? Quite a few times in New York. So I think I probably would be really mad and it would probably be because of what I had went through. And a lot of times it's not, the, it's not up to the actual company like these packages that i had stolen i i didn't get a replacement on them like i bought them from ebay the seller wasn't going to give me a replacement on it that wasn't their fault that the mailman left it on my porch and somebody walked along and stole it like that's i can't be um i can't be responsible for other people's actions and that's kind of like you know how i be feeling about when i send a customer away so I, i've changed up my way of thinking to where you're not getting no package unless you sign for the shit if you're not home then you're not getting no package and that's just how i deal with it um because i've also had a customer try to lie to me and say she never got some shit when she signed for it so well you know what i'm saying well she in, not only did she sign for it but she changed the address of where it was going she forwarded it to her new moving address so it was like you know what i'm saying like for me i probably would get really upset if i knew somebody that did that only because i've been through this you know what i'm saying in my own circumstances and and just recently another customer tried that shit bitch you knew you got that package you didn't sign you signed for that shit try to say she didn't get it but oh yeah somebody in my family signed for it I'm like, uh, or whatever okay but you got your package so i i would definitely get i would be i would be pissed i would be mad that would be my first um response that would be i would be mad like yo you stealing from people like don't steal from people and like i don't i don't really dig nobody stealing like if you want to steal then that's your business but my thing is this don't steal from a personal person that you know don't go to nobody's house steal from them don't go in nobody's car steal from their car don't steal nobody's car because this is what people have worked hard for like if you really need to steal can you go to like one of those big ass chain stores and steal from them because they got that shit covered but you don't steal from somebody and so i think like her friend is wrong for that shit because you don't know what somebody has ordered it could be their last they could really really need it 
You know what I'm saying? They could have been waiting for it or vice versa, whatever. Whatever the circumstances, you just don't know. So I really would have been pissed off if that was me and I was walking through her house and I seen that. I would have been pissed. Would I have reported her to the authority? I don't think I would have did that because I don't know her circumstance. Like she says, she's a single mother. Like everybody has a circumstance and I don't really try to get involved. That's what I try to a lot of times mind my fucking business and not be involved in a lot of people's drama and bullshit. Okay. Because it seems like no matter what you tell them right or wrong, if you tell them what they want to hear, then you're in, in good favor. Ooh. Now, what I'm really pissed off right now about is, is 120, right? And I know this is not part of the story, but we ordered this guy to come over here and do our carpets. And this Monday, he confirmed that window time between 12 and 1, and it's 120. Now, first of all, I had used him before, and I had couldn't find his information, so I had to use this other company. But then I found his information once again while I went through Groupon this past couple weeks ago, a week ago, to get his to order my rugs to be cleaned. So anyway, Friday, he confirmed that he was going to be here today, Monday, between the windows times of 12 and 120, and he ain't here. I mean, excuse me, between 12 and 1, and it's 120, he ain't here. This is what I've been talking about. Like, you know what? And you know what? I really tried to support the business. He did a great job of cleaning the rugs, but he was a black guy. And I feel like, yo, the fuck? Yo, like, don't, don't do that because I'm gonna finish this video and if he don't ring my motherfucking doorbell, we're gonna have a whole, a whole problem, okay? But I really feel like, you know, now this is the hard part. What are you really supposed to do about, about it as a friend to her? Or, or what would I do? Like, I don't know what I would really do. I'm, I'm, I did tell you how I would feel about the shit. I would be angry, but I don't feel like I would go to the proper authority. Like, I can't imagine myself calling 911 or calling the police station and being like, yeah, hello. So, yeah, my neighbor, my friend, you know what I'm saying? She um stole some packages. I don't think I would do that, but you know what I would try to do? I would try to make that bitch return every last fucking package. That's what I would try to do because I feel like that's only right. Go ring their doorbell, return their package, or just leave it on their porch. That's that's what I feel. That's the only right. You could, if the person see you return the package, you could just say it was dropped off at my house. That's the least you could do is return this shit. Like I don't think that shit is right. So I would make that bitch. You know what? I would threaten her. That's what I would do. It's not like I like to threaten them like that, but I would threaten her for sure. I would threaten her. I would let her know, bitch. If you don't fucking return every last one of these packages, I'm gonna call the police on you. That's how I would threaten her. That's how I would handle it after I was mad because I would be really upset. So I would make her return every last one of those packages. Could you imagine? You walk in somebody's fucking house and they got a whole dining room table and some chairs filled with other people's shit. Like, come on now. Now it's like you don't steal from people. Like, don't steal people's packages because you don't really know what people are waiting for. It could be something to save their life. You know what I'm saying? Something medically that they need. And here it is. You come jacking up shit, jacking people's products. Like, who the fuck does that? Like, come on now. We don't do shit like that. I don't know. But she said that, you know what she did say? You know what's crazy though? Know, that glitter did say that her, she didn't think her and when well, I call her Maddie could even be friends like that because they came from a different background. Now, Glitter happy though, because she didn't left the Brooklyn projects, okay? And moved to Houston, or moved to, she didn't say Houston, just moved to Texas. The girl, Glitter, Maddie is from Houston, Texas and feels entitled, I guess. Now, where the real dysfunctional family is at, I'm not sure, but I guess Maddie is the dysfunctional family or whatever. You know what's so crazy though? It's crazy because, like she said, this young lady, this girl, she's in her mid-30s, and she came from a really good family, you know what I'm saying, a well-to-do family. Her mother's a teacher. Her father's a retired fighter, fire, firefighter. Even though those people don't make, like, the, the most, the most, the most of the money, you know, they work for the city and stuff, they still have really good jobs. The, fa the father, you know, retired fireman, the brothers in the armed forces. So it seems like they're just well um, like good citizens, okay. Not to say maybe not money way money wise, but they're just great citizens. Meanwhile, we got Maddie, who's also part of that family, and she is a counselor for alcoholics. This bitch need her own goddamn counselor. She need one for fucking stealing, okay? She's stealing. She's not just going to the store stealing. She's stealing people's packages. Do you know how much work that is to steal somebody's package? Like when I say how much work it is to steal somebody's package, but you fucking gotta you gotta watch your back. You gotta really watch your back. And like, how dare you go up on somebody's motherfucking property and steal from them? Like, it's one thing. Like, there's this video that I seen recently. This guy, he stole something. He was a pirate thief. But it was in like, um, it seemed more or less like a, like an apartment complex kind of like. 
because there were so many doors close to him. So he just, as he was walking by, I think he had a bag in his other hand. Maybe he was coming from the store or whatever. So as he, he, he had to walk past his door to get to his own, I guess. And so as he walked by, he just, you know, slightly scooped down and picked it up and kept on moving and kept on pushing. But okay, the people that really do the worst part, porch pirating or whatever is the ones that got to walk up off the sidewalk. You know what I'm saying? Because the house is back off the sidewalk. So you got to walk off the sidewalk, up a little path, up the steps, and then grab their fucking property, their shit that's off their porch. Like, I'm I'm amazed at people. And some of these people have balls for days. They don't even give a fuck if a ring doorbell, a camera is looking at them. They'll still go and steal somebody else's shit with their face all in the camera. Like, do you even know that this person could see you on their video and then you don't even probably know what they look like but they have a full view of you and they could walk right past you walk coming up up on you you don't even know and they could knock you the fuck out yeah i remember this bitch stole my motherfucking package two months ago yeah now i see your ass now what like these people have balls for days just to go up on somebody else's property and steal their shit like it amazes me people and their audacity amazes me in general okay that shit amazes me in general so I'm not surprised by Glitter's friend. But Maddie, she, I'm not sure if she did all of these package stealing in one day. It's just that, bitch, you're stupid because you have all the evidence right there. You didn't even have the decency to take the shit out the boxes. You have all the evidence just sitting right there in the dining room. So for whoever walks through and sees it, you're getting caught. If the police was called to her home because somebody saw her stealing it, she's getting caught. And you know what? She rightfully deserves to. She, I don't like when people steal from other people that are hardworking. You know what I'm saying? Like I've had, like I said, I've had packages stolen. I've had my truck stolen for me too out here a few years ago. So I'm really like adamant on like, don't steal from people. Do not steal from people. I don't really feel like you should steal, but I know with the economy in this day and age, people need to steal their groceries to get to survive. So I get that. So yeah, if you want to steal, steal from the fucking chain stores, but don't go stealing from like your neighbors and shit. And though I'm not trying to promote stealing, I'm just saying that like, you know, just, just don't do it. Just please don't do it. Like glitter. I really feel like, you know, if that was me and that was my friend, what I would do if I were you is I would threaten her with calling the police. You know what I'm saying? Not threaten her life, but threaten to call the police and let her know, like, if you don't take each piece of these packages back, you know, and, and then also let her know, like, look, I'll come with you. If you want me to, I'll be the driver and I'll come with you. And you could just, you don't even have to ring the doorbell. Just leave the package. That's all you need to do is just leave the package. But if someone walks up on you and sees you bring the package back, you can just say it was delivered to your home by accident. That's it. That's all you need to do. That's what I would do. And if she doesn't really want to go through with that, then I would say, well, if you don't do it, bitch, I'm going to call the cops on you. What was she going to do? Beat you up? Because, like, seriously, if she beat you up, you could still go to the cops and call the cops on her. Because I know I would. If she beat me the fuck up, if that was my friend and she beat me up because I said I was going to tell on her, then once I came to my senses, I'm going to tell on her. Mm -hmm. for, for sure. For sure, for sure. Because you done beat me up. I know I can't beat you, so I might as well just go tell on you now. I mean, yeah, you put your, you done stole and you committed violent felon. Mm -hmm, you're a felon now, for sure. No, but seriously, that's how I would handle it. I don't know. What do y'all think of Porch Pirates? I'm pretty sure nobody likes getting their shit stolen. Do y'all know anybody that stole? You know what? Back in the days, like, I ain't even on front, okay? Because I'm just for real like that. But back in the days, you know, when I used to live in New York, we used to have those thieves that were, you know, you, you give them a list of what you want for your kids. You get them a size such and such, go to this store. They go to the Gap. They go to Old Navy. They go, they, look, I, I knew those kleptomaniacs back then, those boosters. We call them boosters, okay? Because they boost your shit. But they come through with the big ass black bags full of shit. Full of name brand shit, clothes with mad tags on it. I ain't even gonna say that I miss those days, but I kind of do miss those days, okay? My mom always would have an issue with like, I'm not gonna buy that shit. Like, okay, well, if you don't, somebody else is. So I'm just gonna be at somebody else and I'm gonna buy the shit. Because if I don't buy it, somebody else is gonna buy it. So I want my kid to look nice and clean too, okay? But you remember back in the day, those were the type of boosters that they had. They just go to the store. They was like real elegant about this shit. I kind of want to say that. But now the boosters today, they will go into fucking Ulta or any store. They steal a whole fucking rack. Okay, they will log, they will load up their bags right in front of them in the stores, and the stores can't do nothing about it. Like back in my time, I'm like damn, why y'all didn't have those type of laws back then when y'all couldn't do nothing about it? I would, I could have came up with some shit. Let me stop fucking with y'all. But for real, like times have changed, and I mean, I know shit is hard for a lot of people, but 
Twitch pirating is not cool. And on top of that, you could like easily lose your life because some people, they don't take lightly to shit taken from them. You know what I'm saying? Like you go up on another person's property and you decide to steal from them. That person could pop off on you and it's really not worth it. Like you can get beaten up. It's not worth it to steal from somebody. So I really think like what I said you should do, you should do for your friend glitter. You know, hopefully she learned her lesson because not only is she rubbing off a bad example to you, but also to her daughter, who, like you said, 10 or 11, she's a sponge. She's going to soak up all of that bad behavior and she's going to just be the next generation of porch pirating. Okay? Yeah. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I'm kind of hungry. I'm going to call that guy because where's my goddamn rug cleaning? I moved all the shit out the fucking way and I'll be damned if he don't come. Oh, yeah, we're going to have a problem. But I love y'all. Stay deep and delicious. Make sure you wait, comment, subscribe, thumbs the video up and I'll see y'all in the next one.